Hello everyone and welcome to Crusader Kings 2 Game of Thrones. Now with the unfortunate end of the Blackwood Bracken series, I ask you guys what we should do next, how we should continue, and most of you actually called for a new series. And uh, well, many of you made some great suggestions as to what I should play next, but uh, out of your many suggestions, there was one in particular that was um, mentioned several times, and that was that I should start a new series at a custom house with a custom courtier, or custom character, I should say, um, whoopsie, that um, is based on myself, based on myself in real life. And this is actually something that I wanted to do for quite a while, so I'm pretty happy that this came up because this is the perfect opportunity for me to actually get this started. Now, um, in this episode, I just want to quickly mention this right here, that uh, this episode right now, I'm just going to talk about the backstory of my character, of my house, and obviously the general rules of this campaign. There's not going to be any unpausing going on, so um, if, you, if you're if you not interested in this, which would be kind of strange, especially with a custom house, but still, then just skip this, and uh, the next, or the first episode will be labeled number one. This will be the actual first episode where we go ahead and unpause stuff. But now, I want to talk about my character and my uh, character's dynasty. So, yeah, um, as I said, this character is based on myself, and pretty much everything about this character, the traits, the appearance, as well as the background story of our house, House is truly based on me and my personal life. Um, the only thing that is different is actually the name. I'm not called Mark and also the last name. Obviously my name is not Sentinel. This is only because of uh, the background story that I've created for this character which by the way as I said is also based on my personal life. But yeah let's quickly talk about the character itself before we move on to the background story because I just want to quickly show you that these starting traits are traits that I've based on myself but obviously um, that, that's very difficult to do because as we know humans are neither you know just good or just evil this doesn't really work so it was very difficult for me to actually find traits that really define me but I'm pretty happy with the setup that I have right now so uh, let's actually start with here I'm I consider myself a pretty just man I'm very objective when thinking well, yeah, when, when, when making a decision, at least I, I think I am. I am I'm trying to be, let's say it like this. Um, and I have a strong sense for justice. That doesn't mean that I'm always doing the right thing, but I'm trying to do it anyway. I'm also uh, a, a law student, so I guess that counts for something. I'm a proud man in the sense that I'm, I'm not arrogant, uh, at least I don't try to be, but I, I am proud of... of well, my accomplishments. Oh, so I, I, I guess, and also I'm, I'm just proud to be member, a uh, member of House Sentinel. So, so yeah, that's kind of important. Um, now I'm also pretty content, and I guess it goes uh, hand in hand with the temper trait. I don't strive for luxury. I'm pretty content and happy with what I have in life. Now that doesn't mean that, for example, I will deny any luxuries or that I uh, don't have any ambitions. That's not true. And especially for this game, this does not mean I'm not going to go out and claim. Stuff. No, I still might do that. Um, it's only that, well, it, 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 it's not going to be like my my main focus. But I guess you will see how this plays out uh, in the first episode. Now, other than that, I'm a family person, which also kind of uh, is important when when talking about my proud trait because I um, I'm basically what Tyrion Lannister always says he was. I want to do a lot for my dynasty, I want to see my house rise to power and I don't care if for that matter I might have you know less luxuries or something like that, I just want my house to prosper, right? Now um, for example just to, to show you, I would make Tyrion the Lord of Castle Rock because I can see he actually has some skills that could be beneficial to our house, just, just as an example. Um, but yeah, that out of the way, obviously I am a family person, I want my dynasty, uh, I want to see my dynasty rise to power. And then last, well not really lastly, but then I also, I'm a very cynical man, or not very cynical, but I am somewhat cynical, mostly because I'm not really religious. I guess that's the easiest explanation. And um, then, of course, there are some traits that I guess need a little bit more explanation. For example, I picked the legitimized bastard trait for me, and that is for two reasons. First off, I'm technically a bastard, simply because my parents never married. But but obviously that doesn't have the same implications now that it had before because well I'm still I, I'm still gonna inherit everything from my mom and my 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 father right I mean I'm still so in a sense I'm legitimized I guess that's what I'm trying to say so this is why it gave me that trait but also I gave me this trait because uh, in this the story I created for Lord Mark here is that he's actually a commoner 
and um, so I kind of wanted to uh, get in some trait that kind of shows that he's from a lower class of society and I felt like the best way uh, to represent this would be by giving him the legitimized bastard trait especially in uh, uh, respect to me personally um, and then obviously uh, I have this knight trait I have actually been knighted two times in my life but obviously not not really like this was more like child's play. I've not actually been knighted in the sense that I'm now Sir Elton John or something like that, no. Um, but still, obviously for this story, it makes a lot of sense that this character is actually knighted. And these two traits, I've also changed from uh, what I think I would personally be uh, to something that makes more sense for this character in game. Now, uh, obviously now at this point, we need to talk about the backstory of House Sentinel, whose motto is, by the way, stand at attention. And I guess I need to explain this because uh, when Lord Mark, and as I said, this story is taken from my personal childhood. When Lord Mark was just about six or seven years old, he and his mother went to a fair at Fair Market. And uh, there, uh, Lord Mark, uh, who always dreamt to be a knight, who, who always dreamt of becoming a knight, he was dressed up uh, with his wooden sword, a wooden shield, and in a wool paper or somewhat armor that his mother made for him. He was dressed up, and when they came uh, and arrived at the gates of Fair Market, he was not interested in looking at the market and any other things. He'd never been out of town, out of his small village, um, right here somewhere. Um, but he was not interested in, in, in visiting the, the, the market at all. All he wanted to do uh, was stand guard at one of the towers. And so that's what I did. So my mom went off and she, you know, would look at the market square. She would, she would come back eventually or occasionally just to check on me if I'm doing fine because it was a very hot day uh, that day. But no, I was there clad in my um, wool armor with my wooden shield and sword and I would, uh, well, stand, stand at attention and look for guards. Uh, not for guards, but I would look for enemies. But of course there weren't any. The realm was at peace and there were no outlaws or anything to fear. Still, I, um, I was a sentry. I was a sentinel to, um, well, to stand there and, and guard uh, the people of Fair Market. And, well, the, uh, when I was standing there, the Lord of Seaguard happened to, um, well, enter the, enter the uh, town as well. And he noticed me. Uh, standing there and he was so impressed by me standing there uh, for for several hours that he decided to actually take me on as a page to be fostered at Sea God um, and uh, eventually I uh, rose to the rank of a squire and later I actually was knighted and I even became a landed knight uh, and now I'm actually ruling as Lord of Sentinel's Point and of course I've taken um, this uh, this, I guess, guard on an on a orange background as my sigil, simply because this is how I gained my knighthood and my lordship, because I was picked up as a guard when I was young. Now, um, as you can probably tell, this is somewhat twisted. I, I've twisted this backstory a little bit for this character. In real life, what happened was I... Well, I was actually knighted right there when I was at this Middle Evil feast, and uh, that was very cool because I always wanted to be, uh, always wanted to become a knight, and so um, this was a very great day for me. Um, but yeah, I think this was enough about our backstory. So, House Sentinel with a sentinel on a orange background, and we uh, are sworn to House Malister, and our words are stand at attention. Now. Um, this is all I really wanted to talk about my character, I guess, in the backstory. Now, one more thing I should mention, obviously, is the appearance. This is also based on myself. I don't have that kind of smug smile, I guess, but, you know, uh, it, this really resembles me the best, I think. I, had diff I do have a little bit of a different haircut, but that changes from time to time. The beard is pretty much like the one I want to have. Mine doesn't look as good because, well, I have some places where I don't have hair, but you know, that's, I guess, because I'm 21, I don't know. Um, but out of, out of everything else, pretty much looks like me. I have a big nose, uh, so yeah. This is probably what the, the closest we're gonna get to a face reveal, uh, at least for quite a time. So yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, this is all I want to talk about my character and, and the background story of my house. So as I said, just to wrap up once again, um, I'm sworn to House Malister, and I kind of owe House Malister my well, my lordship. And so I guess we have kind of the, um, kind of a relationship like the Mandalays have to the Starks, in a sense. Um, so I definitely will follow the Malisters 
in quite a lot of wars, but there's some exceptions uh, of people that don't want to fight. For example, I don't want to fight against Stannis, if this should ever happen. Don't know if it will happen, but then I will probably uh, not honor the call to arms. But we'll see. We'll talk about this as the game progresses. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, I guess a couple of things that I do want to talk about. One more thing in particular is uh, the rules of this series. Now, as you can see, I am obviously starting out as a mega lord. I don't really have much income. I don't really have much money. And for that reason, I decided that it might be better if we uh, have something else to do well, especially in the beginning when we don't really have much to do. So I decided I would uh, play this series with the Flame Queen's building mod that adds tons of buildings to, uh, well, to your estate. And that's going to be very interesting because we can look at this, we can all build all of these things, armor smith and levy barracks and all these kinds of cool, uh, cool things that are not too, you know, expensive, but they can still, you know, provide a huge benefit to even a small keep. So this is really cool, very really interesting, and I hope that this makes the, um, well, makes the playthrough of, you know, being such a small lord even more enjoyable. Now, um, also because I will only pl play uh, in Westeros, I've decided I'm going to be playing with the Westeros only submod. This was one of the suggestions from you guys in the comment section because um, this will make the game much faster, at least it should. Um, so yeah, since, well, I, I thought we're never going to play here anyways, at least on this series, I felt like this would be a great uh, opportunity to check out this mod and if it actually makes things faster. Uh, other than that, as you can see when the Clash of Kings start date, and um, yeah, I've also decided that this would be a great thing to have because we can look at all of the things, all of the wars evolving um, without having to be involved uh, ourselves. And while all the, uh, all, all the wars, I guess, go on, we can start building up our, our uh, lordship. And once we've actually built up, the wars may, may be over and then I can actually go ahead and do something of my own. Now, uh, we'll talk about, I guess, my plans... I guess I could talk about it a little bit later. Well, I, I guess I could talk about it right now. I do. I am definitely interested in rebuilding old stones. I definitely want to do that, and it also fits quite well that we're right next to it. However, that was not the reason why I picked this. I actually picked this lordship in particular right here because I don't. I've never seen Rushmore. That this is what this place was called before. I've never seen that in on any maps, so I don't think it's canon. So. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. And also, I've never seen the House Rushmore come up in the books anyway. Now, I might be wrong about this, but I it was kind of important for me to not replace a canon house. And I don't think that Rushmore is canon, so I felt like this would be a good spot to actually um, start our own custom house. Uh, also, yeah, obviously, I want to have old stones. I want to colonize this. And then, I think it would be kind of cool if I had, like, these four... The, uh, counties like Stilfen, the Blue Fork, maybe even become a High Lord of the Trident. That's a High Lordship that has not yet been created. So this would be really cool. This could be a possible thing. Um, so yeah, there are definitely some cool things I can go for. Um, but yeah, this is all I want to talk about my ambitions. But one more thing that I do want to talk about is custom courtiers. Now I should mention that I'm actually too frustrated to edit the save files anymore. Now, I, I don't think that the uh, custom couriers were actually the sole cause of, um, well, the this the, the end of the Blackwood Bracken series, but I definitely think that they added to the instability of the whole, I guess, series itself. Like, I think they were at least part of the reason why the series ended. And on top of that, it's a lot of work to actually edit the files. Now, maybe not as much I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not that much. I, I, I can't really say it's too much work for me to really enjoy the game as much as if I wouldn't edit the files, if that makes any sense. So I would always be like, oh damn, I, I want to play, but now I have to edit the files again. And that would really make me enjoy the game much less. And I think that maybe it didn't show in, in the series, but it, if I continue, it would definitely show in my videos at some point. And I don't want that because... Well, that, that, that would just suck, but um, that obviously means no couriers or no custom couriers in that sense that we had uh, in the, in the well, later series. But I do uh, still want to have custom couriers, and so I came up with a different system on how we can still implement them without me actually having to edit the save files. Now, um, this is a compromise, obviously, so it will suck, but I hope that you guys will still like it. Um, so here's my idea. I, um, let's, let's quickly 
check out our code, for example. So we have certain critters at our code. For example, let's check, let's check out Raymond. So let's say I make Raymond my um, spy master simply because that's his best skill, right? Now, what you guys could do, one of you, right? I'm just going to pick that. I guess I'm just going to pick the one, the first person to, to do that. Um, you guys can leave a comment below this video or any other video where you uh, state the first name of the courier, right? That is, that I've actually employed. I actually have to employ that character. Um, you can say this first name. Then you can go ahead and pick a coat of arms and a last name for that character. You can also pick two good traits and one bad trait that you want to add to that character. So for example, um, you can add Raymond of House uh, Churling and he has something as a background, doesn't matter, right? Uh, and then you want him to become a diligent and brave man who's also gluttonous. Um, and the reason behind this is that all of these things that I've just mentioned, I can edit from from this screen right now. I don't have to go into the files. I can open the console and edit these these traits easily. And I can also, um, well, go through the intrigue menu, raise this guy to nobility, which will allow me to pick a coat of arms for this guy. And a last name because uh, I have the customization or customized house DLC so I can quickly just go on this change the name of that dynasty and change their sigil as well so this is all of the things I can do without editing the save files and this is gonna make my life so much easier so basically the only thing that you cannot change is that character's age obviously and that character's first name everything else is possible now what I don't want you to do though is changing the guy's religion or culture because um, the reason I'm doing this is that I don't end up with characters that I don't need at my at my court because those were also, also things that have frustrated me two overpowered characters and characters that didn't really make sense like of course I get you want to have a Valyrian dragon rider I understand that but it doesn't make much sense if I'm an, an old god northerner why would I have someone of Valyrian faith of course Religion maybe does not matter to some characters as much, but it always personally bothered me. So this will limit that in a way. And also obviously because you can only pick two good traits and you have to pick one bad trait, you won't create overpowered characters. Um, yeah, uh, one thing I should mention is that you can also pick good traits such as formidable fighter, genius, strong, quick, brawny, and shrewd. However, these uh, traits that I've just named they will actually take up both of the good traits. So if you want to have a formid if you want to add the formidable fighter trait to one of to one of these characters, you can not add another good trait. It's only going to be that one good trait and one bad trait. So that just uh, well, just so you guys know. I think I've pretty much covered it all. If you have any questions, which I guess you will uh, have, please leave them in the comments. I will, as you know, respond to all of your comments. And yeah, just, just let me know what you think. Anyways, that was it from me for now. I think I've talked about everything that I wanted to mention. Uh, oh, okay, one more thing. Actually, I've just, just remind myself. Um, obviously, traits that I don't want to have for your uh, custom couriers, I guess, will be dragons, no, no dragon riders, no eggs, no villain steel swords, and no animal companions. But yeah, I think that's pretty straightforward. Other than that, um, as I said, if you have any questions regarding anything, please let me know. I will respond to you as soon as I can. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching.